Hey guys, Aniso here, and in today's video I want to give you guys an updated version of the IO guide for 2022. So just a few days ago, the new patch with Primal Beast got released and IO got some huge changes. So this is definitely a great time to learn IO. I think all the new additions to him are really nice to play, they feel great. And also he's still one of the highest winning heroes, especially in the support role in Immortal Bracket. Since this guide is also made for newer players, that have never played IO before, I quickly want to cover all the spells and the interactions and how they work because they can be pretty confusing for people that have never played IO before. There are also timestamps in the video, so you can just skip this section if you are already an experienced IO player and you know all the interactions with the spells already. So our first spell is called Tether. This is the bread and butter skill of IO. This is what makes IO IO. So you can link yourself to one of your allied heroes and you will gain the movement speed of his hero and you will also buff his movement speed by a percentage amount. As you can see right now we have 320 movement speed and if I tether to the Sven here, who has 414 movement speed, I will also gain his movement speed. This is really important. So this is why we don't buy boots on IO. But the most important interaction is that we also share our HP region and all of the healing that we gain to our tethered partner by an amplified amount. So as you can see here right now I have 15 HP region and the Sven gets healed up by 26 every second. I can also use items such as Holy Locket or Mechanism onto myself to heal up my partner. So this is why Io is such a great healing support that scales really well with items that bring heal to himself or HP region. Tether will also slow enemies that are standing in the tether by a huge amount. So when someone is running away and your carry is chasing them, you can just body block them really easy like this while they are slowed. Also the tether will break if you and the target split too far away from each other. However the cast range of your tether is way bigger and if you use this from far away you will get pulled towards your allied hero and you can also cross high grounds with this. So the next spell is Overcharge. Overcharge will buff up you and your tethered partner with more attack speed and spell amplification. You will also gain a percentage amount of your health healed, same as your tethered target. So if you combine tether and then you press Overcharge, you can heal up for a huge amount of HP. You should spam this ability in the laning stage and then in later fights, Use this to buff up your chorus with attack speed and spell them. Also use this to enhance the farming capabilities of your core. Our next ability is called Spirits. Ayo will summon up to 5 spirits around him that can deal damage to enemies once you hit the enemy. You can also pull in and out the spirits with the additional buttons that we get right here. One is to pull them in and one is to pull them out. You can also press the button twice to stop them halfway. So right now I can press pull in and then I press pull in again and they will stop at midway. Our last ability is called Relocate. This is our ultimate. Relocate will allow you to relocate you and your tether target global around to anywhere on the map. So if I click here with the ultimate it takes a channel and after the channel we will get relocated here. You can use this to relocate people back to your fountain to save them or to make some huge gangs or also to just farm behind the enemy lines when the enemy is in your side of the map. Keep in mind if you get stunned while you channel the relocate, the relocate will get cancelled. Now we will cover the skill and item builds for IO. First of all, there are two separate builds for IO. One is focused around only buffing and healing up your teammates and giving the most benefit to your partner and the other build is more evolved around like spirits and dealing damage as a hero yourself. Especially for beginners I would definitely advise go for the first build that we discussed which is the healing only focus build because you don't need to use spirits that often. If you want to you can even skip them completely which makes the build way more easy to play and also makes you buff up your cores even more. So for the first build we focus on tether and overcharge in the early levels, usually prioritizing tether at any level that we can. This will just give more movement speed and more healing for the lane and winning the lane is the most important thing. The healing scaling on overcharge 
is not that big compared to Tether. Especially if you use like Tangos and Healing Souls, having more healing through the Tether is a big deal. Then on level 6, you can take Relocate if you feel like you can gank people. But you can also skip the Relocate talent for level 9 and then you just take Overcharge and Tether for the first 8 levels. Which I do a lot. After we've maxed out Tether and Overcharge, we can choose between leveling up the Spirits or skipping the Spirits entirely and only take Attributes. Both builds are viable and I feel like it depends on what kind of heroes you play with. Right now, with the new addition to Shard, the Shard will give spell amplification and spell lifesteal to you and your Tether partner. So if you play with heroes that can make use out of the Shard and you buy the Shard anyway that will give you a lot of magic damage and spell amplification, I would probably get the Spirits. But if you don't plan on buying the shard just because you play with like a life stealer that only right clicks or like an Ursa, I would probably go for stats instead of spirit just so you have more survivability. You will realize on IO you get focused a lot so the additional stats will also help you in fights. For the talents we can definitely choose between both talents at level 10, both are really good. Health region will scale especially with the holy locket that we buy early on increasing our heal even more. And then the attack damage to tethered units will just increase the farming speed of your partner by quite a large margin. For the level 15 talent, for the build that we are discussing right now, I would always take the tether movement speed just because we are focusing on supporting our core. For the level 20 talent, I think both talents are viable, but I would lean to the overcharge max HP region bonus right now. But if you want to do a lot of split push with the relocate or you're just doing a lot of ganks, the other talent is definitely viable as well. For the level 25 talent, right now I would also lean towards the 400 health to your talent partner every game. Unless he never dies anyway, then you can go for the other talent. But you probably want to provide more health for him. For our starting items for the healing build, we go for a headdress and one set of tangos. And then usually you get like a healing salve with the first courier usage. This will just ensure that you win the lane by just healing up your partner with tether and the headdress. The amount of healing you do is just incredible. For our first core item we go for holy locket every single game. We used to build mechanism but holy locket overall is just better. Usually though you don't need the AOE heal of mechanism and also the stats the holy locket provides is just way better. You will also get way more passive healing increase with the 30% added bonus to your tether. It's just overall a way better item. With the recent changes we can now buy the shard at 15 minutes instead of 20. So we can build this item as a second item if it's a good shard game. Usually this depends on your cores. If you play with a core that needs a lot of magic damage such as Gyrocopter, Lunar, maybe Bristleback. Those kind of heroes that also deal a lot of spell damage. You should definitely prioritize getting a shard as like a second item. Maybe as a third item if you think you need a little bit more survivability. If you're playing with cores that can't make use out of the spell amp and the lifesteal amp, such as lifestealers, ursas, anti-mages, you probably just don't buy the shard at all and then you also go for the stats build that we talked about before. Then for the mid game, usually what you're looking for with those mid game items is more survivability. With IO, if you stay alive for longer, you will provide more heal for your tethered partner. And especially the higher MMR you go, the more you will get focused by the enemy team. So you definitely need more survivability. If you play against heavy magic damage burst teams, you can probably build the Glimmer Cape or the Hood if you want more HP region, just to be more safe against magic damage. And then if you just want more stats, you can go for the Solar Crest if you also want to be able to buff up your core. Or like the Sanj that will increase your HP region. If the enemies have a lot of physical damage that just bursts you down like crazy, you can go for like the Ghost Scepter. For the late game items we have BKB and Heart. BKB is really nice if you're getting focused on a lot by magic damage and you will just want to stay alive for longer. And the Heart, it is overall probably the best healing item for IO. It just increases your base HP which also makes your overcharge heal more and then it adds a percentage healing. But the heart is really really expensive, so in most games you will prioritize getting more mid-game items. Like 3 or 4 of the items before, and then you just get the heart as like the 
fifth or sixth slot item. Don't just buy hard as like a third item. It is way too expensive to buy this this early on. Then we have two situational items. You can buy a soul ring, usually after the holy locket, if you're playing with heroes that need a lot of mana, such as Storm Spirit, for example. And then we also have Spirit Vessel. This is only good if you need um, healing reduction against like Timber Sore or Morphling or whatever. The second build is the build that's more focused around dealing damage with the spirits. You can also play this as like a core in the offlane or even as a hard carry or mid. But this is less focused on supporting your allies and more focused on being like a real hero yourself that deals damage and then transitions into a semi-core. As a support I would only advise going for this build if you have only carries that can't make any use out of tether and overcharge. For example if you have like an anti-mage hard carry and then queen of pain mid and then a lycan offlane. None of those heroes really makes a lot of use out of tether and overcharge early on and it's also really hard to stay tethered to them. So in this case I would probably go for this build. So instead of only taking tether and overcharge the first few levels, you will take one point in tether, one point in overcharge and then you max out the spirits first. Afterwards you can either max out overcharge if you want more aggressive potential like more spell amp and even more attack speed. Or you can max out tether if you feel like you need a little bit more healing. Both are viable options. For the talents we will take 4 health region at 10 just to stay alive longer. And then we definitely want to take 45 spirit zero damage just because the build is centered around the spirits. At level 20 and 25 it's the same as before. Just choose whichever talent you feel like you need in the situation right now. But the most important talent here is like the spirit zero damage. And for the items, we start off with the same items, just buying Tango and Headrest for a good lane. But then, before the Holy Locket, we will build the Soul Ring, just to have enough mana to spam the spirits. For our core items, we want to build Aghanims and then the Shard, just so we always have spirits up. Also, the Aghanims would allow the spirits to slow the enemies, so it's more easy to hit them. And then the Shard will provide Spell Amplification and Spell Lifesteal for ourselves. Then we buy Sanjin Kaya. Sergeant Kaya will provide more spell amplification for us and also enhance the spell lifesteal that we gain from the shard. Afterwards I will probably buy any item that also gives spell lifesteal just all the time because the shard only provides spell lifesteal for you if you activate the overcharge. So it's either the shroud or the new bloodstone. I think the new bloodstone might be really OP in this build just because you can activate it for double the spell lifesteal and it's basically like a satanic for spells. Then the situational items, you can just always buy the other items. You can also buy one of those items before the Aghanim Scepter if you want to. And for the late game, we just have BKB and Heart again. Same as before. Now we check out some gameplay footage for general tips and just so you guys can see how to play IO in a real game. Here we are playing with Aluna. Try to pay close attention to how I position myself. I want to be close to the Lunar and then also take some of the enemy hits if possible, but once I drop half HP I try to go back and kite. Basically kiting with Io is one of the most important things. Also here I make really good use out of the tether slow. I know that a lot of people they never make use out of this, but for me this is really important. Here you can see the same again. Ursa is going onto the Lunar and I just try to position myself in a way that he is like slowed by the tether. Just so he has harder time catching up for the Lunar, which will make her more survivable. Also, since they swapped targets onto me, I was running in a different direction from Luna, so I could pull myself towards Luna with the tether pull. This is usually a way better way of surviving than just running with your carry. This way the enemies have to decide, and if they decide to go for you, you can just tether to your partner once he's far away. Also pay close attention to my positioning right here. I always try to be behind Lunar when there's a lot of enemies that could just burst me down. Just so I can always relocate her out if needed without the risk of myself dying. Those long sustained fights that you can see here are especially really good for Io. So in this clip I'm farming with Lunar in the triangle and then we see the enemies going on to storm and I immediately relocate with Lunar. When trying to relocate don't just relocate into the enemy team. Either wait for them to use spells onto your teammates so that you can relocate into them after they've used their spells. 
or you wait for your team to initiate onto the enemies with some form of stun. After the relocate, you can decide to either leave your carry or take him back, depending on the area that you want to play in the next minute. Right here you can see I just left Lunar and then I TP'd back to her just so we can keep playing this area. On a lot of heroes you want to play with your team when your team is strong. With Ayo this is a little bit different. As long as you have relocate ready you try to play away from your team together with one other hero that is really strong. Usually it's your carry just so you can put more pressure onto the map and then relocate if needed. So here our team is already taking an engagement. We don't have relocate but we were pretty close. So after the enemies have used their spells, we go in and once I see Enigma, I just instantly run back to not get black hold and then I can heal Luna through the black hole and all the damage. Again, try to pay close attention to my positioning. I always try to position myself behind Ursa so he has to stand in the tether and he can't reach Luna. Luna would definitely die here if I wouldn't slow Ursa with tether the whole time. Also, I was spamming the solar crest onto Luna the whole fight. Now we check out how to siege the enemy high ground. Usually before sieging the enemy high ground you almost always want to take ages by killing Roshan before you go high ground and then pay close attention to where I'm standing. I'm trying to be as far in the back as possible so the enemies can't catch me on max tether range. And then here once the fight starts I don't just immediately tether in, I just wait for the enemies to use some spells and to get off some hits onto the Luna before I tether to her. Otherwise they would just kill me instantly. Also, I just use my locket when Luna is really low, so the enemies think they can maybe kill her, but then we can just turn the fight. I see a lot of newer IO players just trying to always be with their carry, and then they would just attack the building, and then they would just get jumped by the Spirit Breaker and Ursa, and they would instant die, and then Luna would also probably die. So positioning is one of the most important things that you can learn on IO. Always try to survive as long as possible, so your core can also survive for longer. Lastly, we will cover some good tether partners for IO that I really enjoy laning with and are also really good in the game. So on the left side we got all the heroes that are really great with the shard, so they benefit a lot from the magic amp and the spell lifesteal, and on the right side is just heroes that are in general great with IO without the shard. For the carries we have Gyro and Luna, both of them really strong laners that like to get the tether movement speed, or both of them deal really high magic damage, and are just general really strong together with IO. And for the offlane, where we play the post 4, we have Necro and Spirit Breaker. Both of them also deal insane amounts of magic damage and they're really great laners again. And then we have mid laners. Those heroes are just really great in the game. Like obviously we are not laning with them. But if you tether like a Lashrek with your new shard, he will deal insane amounts of damage and he will be unkillable. And for the Zeus, providing 25% magic M for him will just be crazy. I think this will be one of the strongest combos this patch. And for the carries, we got Ursa. Ursa just has immense kill potential when paired with an IO because of the movement speed and attack speed. Ursa's only problem is to stay close to enemies, but IO can solve those problems completely. And we have Juggernaut. The spin paired up with the movement speed of Tether is really great. And in the mid and late game, the healing ward. For Ayo is just incredible to keep your whole team alive. And we have Dusa. Dusa just really likes to get steroids such as the overcharge attack speed. And then also you can provide mana and health at the same time. So it's basically just impossible to kill the Dusa. And for the offlaners we just have really strong and beefy laners like Nightstalker and Slaughter and Legion. All of them provide any form of movement speed bonus. Combined with your tether, you're basically almost max movement speed all the time. And all of them really benefit from the overcharge attack speed. So all of them really, really nice lanes. If you guys want to stay updated for more IO content, feel free to click the sub button just so you don't miss out on any content. Also make sure to check the description of the video for any changes or new discovered builds for IO. I will definitely put them down below. And if you're interested in more IO content, also check out one of the other IO guides I have on the channel. Have a nice day, see you!